welcome to python application programming course last sessions we had discussed about iterations strings so this session will start with files last session we had discussed about strings so this session will talk about files see uh, till today like what are the sessions that we had discussed uh, we had defined one variable we gave input to that variable then we use that variable in a looping structure or maybe a control structure then we discussed about string functions. So, all those values what we are trying to store in a variable, where they are, they are into memory, right. So, now when our program is working, whenever my, whenever my program is running, I am able to access the value of that variable. What if my program terminates? Normally or abnormally, it does not matter, my program gets terminated. Now, I want to access the value what I have stored in that variable, which we cannot. The reason the values that we are trying to store for a variable all are in the primary memory. But there are many instances in our real life where we want to access data whatever we have stored in the later stages. So, I, I have some uh, three files maybe something like an example like I have a variable where I am trying to store three values into it, but after some time I will add two values. So, it should become five. So, these three values should be existing in nature I try to add two to them. But the programming that we had discussed till today, nothing a facility of that kind was available to us. So, I have three things, three are accessible, once my program gets terminated that is the end of my values in the variable. But what if I want phi? Yeah, very easy, go back to the program, modify to phi, run the program, but we do not want that, right. So, what was existing earlier, at some point of stage we want to access it or do some modification or do some addition to that and so on, lot of operations that we want to perform, for which? the discussion what we have done for the previous concepts is not applicable. So, as we understood there are many instances in real life where we want to do some processing on the data after I to try to store at some point of stage later stages. So, for which the concept that is available is files. So, file handling there are many programming languages where we have file handling concept, but when you look at python no, it is very very easy the file handling case. So, now we will get on to the actually the concept of file and try to discuss something about that and look for what functions or facilities available in python so that the programmer life is made very very simpler. So, when you look at this diagram what comes to our mind? So, it, it looks like something like okay, we have something called a CPU, we have input output, we have something about a memory. So, this whole diagram looks like what? A diagram which talks about actually as a programmer in the overview, like in overview what is the components of our computer, what is the components of the computer. So, when you look at that, we have input for example, we will declare a variable index with a value 4. Now, where do I store this? Yeah, normally we know right. So, this index variable is stored in main memory. Then this value 4, a reference to index value 4 is stored in main memory. Now, when my program is running this index variable with value 4 is available so that I can access it do any operation on that index variable with a value 4. Now, I can also check is my value of x which is 4 less than 3 based on that I can take an action. Now, till my program is running I have an access to my index variable with a value 4. So, all the variables what we have discussed everything will be stored in the main memory and I can access at any point of stage. But what is the problem? Once my program gets terminated or maybe I have an input do some processing and uh, the output is displayed. Now, that is fine. After that, after finishing my job my program gets terminated. So, once my program ter gets terminated what I have stored in the memory uh, main memory is everything is lost. So, I do not have a reference to my index, I do not have a value 4 which is stored in the index all those references are not there. So, now if I want again the, val the value for a 4 and, uh, and the index as uh, my variable, I have to run the program again. So, it is nothing like when I run my program, when my program is active, when my program is in the execution state, I have the access for all the values. Once my program gets terminated, I do not have an access. So, if I want access again, I have to rerun. Now, that is a simple example like sorting n numbers, all that is fine. But there are many instances as I told, maybe example, I have a student data. So, first year, first year I have 200 students get admitted to the college, 
then I store information of all these 200 students in main memory using concept of structures and so on. So, if I store that my program is running I am able to access 200 students, but can I make sure that my program will run without any halt maybe some problem with my uh, system or system crashes my program gets terminated. So, in that case I lose the 200 students data I am talking about only 200, but look for there are huge data that I am trying to store lot of information about lot of students. So, if I get that data appropriate whenever I need it is good, but we cannot guarantee that that particular data is available provided we have that in the main memory we cannot guarantee. So, now they came up with a concept saying that okay, main memory we have some functionality we will also use something called as a secondary memory where we try to store data here there came into existence concept of files. So, now what happened I have some data which I will which I may push into my memory then from there I decide what data to be stored so that for a later access then I push all the data onto the secondary memory. Now, my program is active I am able to access main memory I am also able to access a secondary memory. After some time my program gets terminated I, I am not able to access what is there in the memory because there does not exist, but what about secondary memory yes they do exist. So, what data I store on my secondary memory is available in spite my program has terminated. So, now coming back to our example we have stored 200 student information on secondary memory my program is running I am able to access that my program gets terminated but what happens to the 200 student data it is still available why because there is a concept of a secondary memory. Now 200 student information is available I will run the program when I run the program I have this access to 200 but I am not creating again I have already created I have already stored the data. So now we have lot of facilities right so wherein the data that I want to store I want to make sure that I need that data when my when my program is running. Ah, in that case we will choose a main memory. If I want data in spite of my program termination or maybe after some time I want to access this data what is available for some other programming language or somewhere else for somebody else then I will make sure that that data is available as a secondary memory where the what is the concept concept is about a files. So, now what is our discussion our discussion will be concentrating on files. Now, when it comes to files there are set of operations but exact sequence of operations are very very important for us. Now, what is the sequence if I have a file then what will be my first step 1 how do I create a file or maybe how do I open a file second after I have created a file or after I have opened a file maybe what is the operation that I want to do right it could be a read operation or it could be a, a write operation then under write you have multiple options where you have some data you want to delete it add it add at the end and do some modification also after all that is done. So, we have first step talking about opening a file in different times or uh, different terms then second we will talk about what are the operation that we want to perform on that file and finally once all that is done we will try to close the file. So, our objective as a python programming is what look at what are the facilities that are provided for 1 what facilities that are provided for 2 what facilities that are provided for 3 like what is the meaning of facility simple functions that are what which are available. Right? So, going further this is an example of a content of a file which we will be referring right. So, this is our file this is the content of the file. Now, if you have a file then how do I refer to this file in my program right. So, a reference to this content is actually the file name file name. So, this file name will help me to access the content of the data right. So, normally what is a, a file here the example that we will take is a text file which is nothing but content what sequence of lines sequence of lines. So, now when we talk about sequence of line we have something to understand here. So, if you look at we have some first line which starts from from which goes till 2008. Now, when you look at the second we tell that as a second line but not first line. So, this is our first line, second line and so on. 
then this is our last line this is our last line so now there is some content inside the file how to refer to the file it is the file name it is the file name so in our programming if I want to look at what is the content of that so how do I access that it is our find line using the file name we have some methodology where we try to access the content of the file using the file name but sl slight in terminology right we look into it now so as I told the first step that we take up in uh, file handling is what opening a file now when you when we talk about opening a file uh, we have some confusion like what now if a file is not created how am I opening a file so there are multiple instances one first time we want to write data into a file where the file does not exist I want to create a file file is already existing I want to do some operation on the file then it is opening a file is an very much appropriate now the designer has given us a facility whether you want to create a new file or open a existing file we need not worry about that we have for which an attributes like we have a function we pass something based on that our action will be taken so it is not that we want to create a file we have a different thing different function no one simple function which gives all the facilities for us so what is step number one it is opening a file so before you perform any action on the file whether it is python or java or any programming language common is what if I want to perform any action on the file the first step that I need is open the file so once I have a opening of the file which is success then I can go further doing any kind of operation on the file which are valid in that instance now so before we read the content of the file before we read the content of the file we should tell what right so we should tell with what are we going to do what are we going to do with that file so now what is this before reading the content of the file we have to tell what are we going to do with that file now here as I told you like one common function is available for doing an operation like existing file we want to open file does not exist we want to create a new file file exists we want to do some kind of operation like read or write and so on so one common function we have which is open which does all of these facilities so now how do I tell that look I have a file you open that file if that file does not exist you create a file so for each of that we have a different functionality but same function it is open so during I call a function open I should also talk like what I have, what will be I what will I do with that file whether I intend to read only the content of the file or I intend to write something into the file if that does not exist create a file and so on right so what is that function which we are discussing now a function which helps us in opening a file with the different characteristics like whether exist does not exist taking care of all of that the function name is open the function name is open so what open does right so when you look at open it is about opening a file but what is the reference to the file so just now we discussed that reference to the file is nothing but our file name file name second open we told what are we doing with that file what what is your intention of opening that file what operation that you want to perform in a file you are supposed to tell so in that case open function has two things one you will tell which file are you trying to operate on second what are you doing with that file like whether you intend to read the content of the file or whether you want to write content into the file and so on which we will discuss further but we need to specify also like what what operation you want to do what is your intention of opening that file so we need to give them a now when you look at open is a function where we are trying to pass file name and the mode like on what kind of operation that you want to do on that file now how do I pass them so in functions we had discussed like if I have something of this kind then I pass these two as parameters to function parameter 1 file name parameter 2 which talks about a mode now open is a function which takes these two parameters and what it is returning and this return is our most important point of discussion so now when you look at open if success if success then we get a something called as a file handler an important variable which is used for further processing now recall just two three slides back I told like this is the content of the file how to identify a file I specifically told that it is a file name 
Now, after open, how do I read the content of the file? How do I write? How do I perform a operation on the file? The only option that is available for us is file handler. So, for open, we give a file name after that is done. So, I do not have any other reference for file name. The reference that I have is a file handler. So, now what is this file handler? File handler is a variable which allows us to perform any kind of operations on a file. So, I want to do some operation on a file. Simple, what? You give a file name, you tell why you want that, then you get a file handler. Use that file handler and do whatever the operation that we want to perform on that file. Right? Now, a sam like one instance is given an analogy for file open. It is as if we have a open option under a file menu. So, take any word processor, take any word processor, you will have a menu. So, when you click on file, you have an option like open. What this does? Similar kind as this, but it is in terms of what? Programming this in terms of application. So, this is only an analogy to understand like what open function is or op what open functionality is. So, as I specified, open is a function which takes two parameters, one the file name, second mode. Now, when you come down to file name, what is a file name? Yeah, we understood just now that we have some content and for that we are trying to give a name for that file and which will be our reference. So, file name. Then mode talks about what? Okay. What is that? What is your intention? Right? Now, as I specified, it can be R, W and so on. So, if it is R, what is the intention? I am trying to open this file where my intention is to read the content of the file. Only reading the content of the file. Now, there are two options. One, when I want to open a file in a read mode, where my intention is only to read the content of the file, there are two situations. What is situation number one? The file name that I have specified is not available. File name that I have specified is available. Then in that case, what is our action? File name is available and we want to open that in a read mode. So, indicating that it is a success. So, we get a file handler for which we can go further processing. Now, what if I want to open it in read mode, my file does not exist. So, as usual if something goes wrong, we know that we get an error. So, it will throw an error saying that the file does not exist. So, appropriately we can look at what is the return value of handle, what is the return value of handle we can take an appropriate action whether to continue doing the operation or there are some error take some appropriate action. Right? Now, an example for this is this one. So, what we are trying to do? We are trying to call a function open where the file name is what? mbox.txt and the mode that which on which I want to open the file is a read mode and what is this? fhand it is a variable. So, this variable is a file handler variable. So, this happens to be a, a file handler. So, this file handler is used for further processing. So, we never refer to mbox.txt later. So, mbox.txt file name is applicable only in the open command after which we use the file handler. Now, coming down to read mode, we understood like if it is a read mode, we have two options here. File exists, success, we go further. File does not exist, we get an error. We have another mode called w we have another mode called w which is a write. So, in that case if I tell my mode is w what is that I want to do? I want to write data into a file. I want to write data into a file. Again two instances occurs. One we want to write into a file when it comes to file you have two occurrences. One file exists fine we are able to write the data. File does not exist but write will not throw an error it will create a new file for us. So, now when it is write, opens for writing, creates a new file if does not exist. So, if does not, if the file does not exist, then it will create a new file. We have one question here. What is it? When I open a file which is already there in a write board, what happened to the content of the file which is already existing? Right? So, if file exists, read is a different thing. But when it comes to write, file exists, yes, we can write data into the file. What happened to the existing data? So, existing data is erased, existing data is delayed. So, it is as if like creating a new file. 
as if like creating a new file, but we are not going to create because file is already existing. So, content of the file gets erased and it will be a new operation that we are performing a write operation on the data. So, if a file exists fine then if file does not exist it will create a new file where we can try to write data into that file. Third we have something called as A where mode R W A. Now, as we know that A in terms of file handling it refers to append it refers to append. So, here again two instances we have one we are trying to open that in the A mode that is append mode file exist fine we will try to what is A I want to write data. What is the difference between W and A here one instance if file exist if it is W what are we doing content of the file is erased we have a new instance that gets added to the file, but if it is an append mode file exist I want to do that in append mode then if file exists the content of the file st stays right. So, in the case the content of the file is not deleted content of the file is as it is plus any extra data that I am trying to add it will be appended to the end of the file. So, existing content will stay as it is new data gets add up which is append. Then we have something called as x a special option something called as x x is for what create. So, x is for create. So, in that case when we tell x when we tell x our intention is to create a file. So, if it does not exist then what now as x stands for creating a file when you are telling that you want to create a file you know that you have not created a file. So, when it is x flag you have two options here one if file already exists it will throw an error if file does not exist then it is success you will create a file. So, you can use a x flag also to create a file. So, open function to takes two parameters file name and the mode based on the type of the mode based on the value of the mode either r w a and so on the file exists or does not exist based on that the action will be taken. So, step number one open the file you get a file handler further processing you will make use of the file handler. Now, one thing that we should remember is there are many instances in the program when we come across like it says like okay, open m box I do not use this close the function. So, now here I am using file name I am giving that is very much appropriate, but I am not talking anything about the mode file is open we do not know what is the instance whether it is a read mode or write mode or nothing right. So, here if something is missing in programming we know that it will take default. So, in our case what is default our default is nothing but r. So, if I give only file name then I am telling that I want to do a read operation on the file. So, if you write m box dot txt comma r it is valid if you write only m box dot txt as a file name and you do not talk anything about the mode still by the mode is by default read. So, it is only read only. Now, what is next step after open? So, we get a file handler we can do lot of processing on the file handler. So, when you look at that this is the content of the file where my file name is m box dot txt once I tell open and if open is success based on the mode you get a handler. So, using this handler we can do the perform like what the actions either it could be read write and so on. So, read write and close. So, for open we do not operate on file handler because file handler is a return type from the function open. So, after we get a file handler read write close all that hands that whole thing happens using the file handler. So, if you look at uh, simple we will try to look open a file we get a file handler we will try to print what is the what is that file handler. So, we will be able to understand exactly like what we are thinking and what python is giving me exact or not right. So, we have a open function and look at that here we have missed out mode. So, mode we have not specified. So, we know if mode is missing by default it is read only. So, I am trying to open this file in a read only mode. So, open this file and my file handler is f handle f handle it is a variable I will tell print file handler. So, look at once I tell print file handler when I run this I am able to see that open file 
this is the file name in which we have opened it is in read mode. So, look at that. So, even in spite we have not told anything about the mode, but still we are able to tell identify that it is mode R reason by default it is R the read only mode. So, we came to know that what is the content it is a open file the file name is this. So, it is printing the handler the file handler details like okay, this is referring to which file in which mode it is open it is referring to file mbox.txt and mode is R. Now, so what if we are trying to open a file, a file does not exist. So, we understood right one if I am trying to open a mode in the read mode in a read mode then we have two instances with reference to file one file exist file does not exist right. Now, if file is existing then the reading operation on the file yeah it is a good operation good option also right. Now, if file does not exist then you are trying to read data. So, what it says we told we understood that it is an error. So, here we will call one function and try to look for what is that error that we get. So, we are opening a file stuff.txt where this file does not exist in my current directory where I am writing this python program I do not have this file stuff.txt. So, now I will try to open the file and check for what do I get. So, when I run this command where the function name is open where my handler is what f hand I get an error. So, look at that error as I discussed in my previous sessions also python is so good that or any programming language is so good that any error goes in it gives me two details one type of error and also some help like what the error number 22 which talks about no such file or directory. So, I will come to know that okay, something I have missed out in the file name. So, I can go back and check with any correction that is required for the file name. So, if based on the mode the action is taken care. So, here when a file is missing specifically in read mode we get an error. What if my file is missing and it is in write mode? We are in write mode same command what we do comma w we open that in a write mode. So, once we specify that we are opening in a write mode assume that stuff.txt is not available in the current directory where I am writing my python code stuff.txt is not available as the mode is w we do not get an error because we know if the file does not exist if it is in a write mode a new file gets created a new file gets created. So, we need not worry about that new files get created. So, now based on the mode we have a different kinds of operations. Now, so one specific uh, um, concept that we need to understand when we talk about file is a new line character because we expect something, but the answer what we get is totally different. So, we need to understand the concept of uh, new line character do small correction in the program. So, that what we thinking and what we are getting as an output both happens to be the same. Now, before I get get on to that what understanding the differences that we have slightly a concept of new line character and then we get on to that actual concept. Now, we have some special symbol called uh, escape sequence characters in our example it is slash n it is slash n. Now, when you look at slash n we refer to what escape sequence character, but we never tell that it is characters. So, when you look at the slash n this slash n is one single character it is not two characters slash is separate n is separate no it is not two character it is single character. So, it is slash n which is called as a escape sequence character. Now, slash n ref there are a lot of escape sequence characters one of them is slash n. Now, what slash n refers to a new line character. So, when you look at this string I am declaring a variable stuff declaring a variable stuff with hello slash n world hello slash n word where slash n is one single character. Now, we will try to look for we will try to print that there are two options how to print first you give a variable and it will tell you the content of the variable. So, now variable is hello slash n world when you display that it is still hello slash n world, but when you tell print when you tell print stuff when you tell print stuff. So, in the case you are trying to print that string string on the screen. So, what is my string 
hello slash n world. What is slash n? New line character. So now hello is printed on the line slash n. It is a new line character. So cursor will come to next line. Cursor will come to next line and print world. Print world. Got it? So slash n is what? A new line character. But why that was not displayed here? Because it is what? Not processing part. We are talking about a print statement. What happens with the print statement? So print that string, the slash n characters are processed. So slash n will be our new line, go to the new line and print it. Now we have another example x slash n y, x slash n y. So when I print this stuff where the character is x slash n y, it should print x, go to next line, it should print y. Yeah, that is we have x, go to next line, print y. What is the length of this string? Right? So when you look at 1, 2, 3, 4 characters, but slash n is we know that it is a escape sequence character which is 1 in nature. So x is 1, slash n is 1, y is 1. So we have a length as 3. So what is important here? So 1, uh, we have something called as a new line character which is slash n, escape sequence character. In spite it looks like 2 characters, it is still a single character only. And that processing is taken care of only in the print functionality. Now with this, we have one specific thing which we need to understand with a print statement. As I told, slash n with print, we have some different understanding. We will get into it. So taking this example, this is the file, content of the file, then why I tell that this is second line? Why I tell that this is second line? Because this is the end of the line. How to identify that end of the line? So internally we have slash n like this. For each of the line internally we have slash n like this which indicates that end of the next line. Hence we have the data in the subsequent lines. If no slash n what will happen? Fine this is also treated as line number 1 continuation of line number 1. We will not treat this as a second line. So assume that you do not have a slash n on the first line. You do not have a slash n on the first line. We do not have this on the first line. Now what will happen? Return will become a part of my first line. So every line indication is what? Slash n. Now going further, look at. So a text file has a new line at end of each line. So slash n here, slash n here, slash n here and so on. So for every line ends with slash n. Now why this slash n is giving us or why are we giving such importance to this? Read a line from a file print it, we will see the difference. Our understanding is different, what we get will be different and we look at how to work around. Okay. So here every end of the line we have a slash n character which is a escape sequence character which is one character in nature. Now what we will do is simple, open the file, read each line, read each line, display that line, display that line. Now how to open the file, open then how do I start reading data from a file? Now why am I telling reading here? I have not specified mode. So by default the mode is R, read only mode. So I have a file handler x file which helps me in reading that content, right? but not write because I have told that this file handler can handle only reading the data. So now what I will do is how do I read each line? There are multiple options. One of the option is use a for loop, for in for in. So what am I doing? I want to read the content of the file using the file handler. Whatever I have read, I will store that in a variable cheese. Then I will try to print cheese. So I read a line, that line gets updated in cheese, I print that line. Go to the next line, go to the next line and so on till I reach the end of the file. So now look at the for loop. I have not specified initial stage, where to end, nothing. That is the advantage of for in kind of loop. So I tell for in this particular file handler, the set of data, I want to access each time one line and do an operation. This can be anything, but I make it simple that I want to print the data on the data on the screen. So if I have 10 lines, I will print those 10 lines separately. So a file handler opens a open for read can be treated as a sequence of string where each line each line is handled separately. Now what is the problem with this kind of 
statement with our understanding. We will get into details of that. Okay. Now, I will finish off this and then I will go back to the concept of the some other different. So, here what am I trying to look for? I am again coming back with slash n concept, slash n concept. Now, I have a file, I have a file, then what am I doing? I am opening a file in a read mode, I am opening a file in read mode, I have a file handler with me, then using that file handler, I will copy each line of the file handler into a variable called line. If I have 10 lines, I copy first line into line, do some step, second line, do some step and so on. So, what I am doing? First line I copy into line and I am checking, I am checking what? Whether my line starts with this comma, word or maybe a string. Whether my line starts with from, if yes, then what I am doing? I am printing a line. So, now, if my content of the file, if my content of the file has something like from data to data from data. Now, what my program has to do? Read the first line. Okay, read it. I have this content here. Whether it is starting from yes, so I should print this. Next, I read the next line because after printing it will go back to loop, right? So, it will read the next line. Next line is 2, so it will not satisfy. Then go back to the next line. Go back to this for loop. Next line is read. It is from, so process this. So, in that case, what do I expect? I expect if this is my input, I expect two lines to be printed like what? From first line, from second line. That is what we expect. But look at when I run this program, assuming that m box, m box hyphen short dot txt, there is some content of it, but look at the format in what it is displayed. From, 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 perfect. But what is wrong in understanding? Going back to our previous slide, I have from as my first line, from as my second line. But look at the output that we have. From as my second, first line, but there is a blank line here. Then we have another from. We have a blank line. Then we have, but where is the slash n coming in? We expect that all this will be together. So, indicating that this is my first line, this will be my second line, this will be my third, fourth, but we are not getting it. This is my second line. This according to the output, this is my third line. According to this, this is my fifth line, seventh line and so on, where I have a different understanding. So, where we have gone wrong? So, I specifically talked about what? Slash n. Because of that slash n, we are getting this wrong results, right? See, is that the uh, output that I am getting is wrong? No. Output is perfect, but only the formatting. Uh, according to me, this should be my second line, but according to the output, it is third line. So, where is the understanding that is going wrong? It is of because of slash n, the new line character. See, this is our new line character. Now, what is this slash n? Yeah, we told, right? Every file end of the line is slash n. This slash n we have. Then, where is this slash n coming in? Where is this slash n coming in? This slash n is coming in because of the print statement. Because of the print statement. So, because of this having slash n which will be automatically slash n is taken from a print statement, we get the output as what? Slash n which comes, this slash n is coming from where? From the program. This slash n is coming from where? From the print statement. So, now because of that we have the first line slash n, it will come down here. Another slash n is given by the print statement, so it goes to the next line and we are able to print that. So, now if I want them continuous in nature, what should I do here? See, I cannot avoid print adding slash n. I cannot avoid print adding slash n, but what I can do? I can remove this slash n from my file. I can remove that. Now, look, when I read this, when I read my first line, it is a string. Now, I have an option where I can eliminate the white space from a string. So, where, what is the function name recall? It is strip. Right? Under that we have two variations, one L strip, second R strip. So, what I want is this slash n where I can call a function strip which does both side, but specifically I know I want to eliminate this white space, so I can call R strip. So, once I tell R strip, this is gone. So, now I have the first line, there is no end of the line. So, my cursor is still there. When I call print, 
slash n is added, so it will come to next line. So my next line gets printed with this. So in that case, I am able to eliminate this slash n. My output, my understanding, everything remains same. So we look into it how to do that. So what we did? We open the file, same, same old program. Wait, I will go back to that program. Right, same program, open the file, line, foreign loop and line starts with from print line. So, before I process, I have to eliminate that slash n. Yeah. So, open is same, then foreign loop, that is also same and line starts with from, that is also same, print line is also same. So, what is that extra line that we are trying to add? It is only strip. So, line dot R strip. So, in that case, I am removing the slash n. So, once I remove slash n, line is nothing but my string without slash n. So, cursor will not go to new line. So, it will stay in the same line. This print will make me cursor go to the next line because it will add automatically slash n. So, it goes to second line. Second line is printed. So, when I run this code, I am able to see this whole thing where my understanding is what first line from, second line is from, third line is from, fourth line is from my understanding and the output that I got is appropriate. So, here what point to remember when you add, when you call a function print automatically whether you have end of the line as slash n or not, it will always add one slash n to that. So, we need to handle that like this. So, going back this is about the slash n. Right? So, we will go back something we have missed out. Yeah. Okay. Now, we want to count how many lines are there in the file, how many lines are there in the file as, as usual, right. So, we are, we are opening a file, we, for each line we try to process. What is the processing that we are doing? Look at that. We are opening a file, for each line what are we doing? Printing. So, instead of printing, we will use count, we will look for some modification in the count. So, look at this part, opening a file, each line from the file we copy into a variable called line and we do a processing. What is processing we want? We want to count the lines. So, we will tell count equal to count plus 1, where initial value of count is 0 and everything is done, fine, we will print that. So, if this file exists, then assuming that this file has lot of content with the appropriate number of lines, so it will print how many lines are there in the particular file. So, what is that which will keep changing based on our requirement? This logic, only that logic, right? So, opening file will remain same, then handling that file line by line will remain same, but processing part can be different based on our functionality. Now, we have one special function, right? So, look at that function, that function is read, the function name is read, but how am I calling that function, right? So, look at that. I am calling that function with f hand, which is nothing but my file handler. So, how do I get that file handler? Simple, I am calling a function open, I get a file handler. On the file handler, you are trying to call a function called read. Now, look, file handler dot read, are you reading one line or the whole content at one shot? It is the whole file in one shot, content of the file in one shot. So, in that case, the complete data what we have stored in the file is stored in this variable, is stored in this variable. So, when you tell print, the whole content of the data will be printed. So, one point to remember when I should not use read or when should I use read. Now, as read helps in reading the content of the file in one shot, the file content if it is small in nature the read function is very much appropriate. If it is very huge, then this variable is also allocated in the main memory. So, handling that, processing that will be very, very difficult. So, make sure that you have less content data to be read, use read function. If it is huge in nature, do not use read, you can go line by line and you can process that based on the request and do the processing part. So, a read is a function which can be used to read the complete content of the file in one shot. But in our previous example, what are we doing here? We are not trying to read the complete content, it is line by line. So, in that case, if I have 1000 lines, this for loop will run for 1000 times, 1000 iteration, right. But read, 
it is not like that. If I have 100 lines, one read will fetch all the 100 lines stored in this variable. That is one advantage of read, but we have a restriction. We cannot use that for a huge volume of data. Right? Okay. Now, so we understood like what is that problem of slash and how did we recover that, right? Okay, fine. So, uh, it is nothing but like one small change we have done here, right? So, now look at we are opening a file, we are reading line by line and we are stripping the R strip. That is nothing but what? A new line character which is on the right hand side of that line is being stripped off, is being removed. Okay, done. Next, look at that. If not line, if not, so we are using this string is not there in that line, if not line dot start with from, if it is not starting with from, then what, what should we do? We are not interested. So, we want to go back, read the next line, what we have used, look, we have written continue. So, same code, small modification. I will write if that starts with, then I will tell print. If it does not start, then what should I do? I want to go back. So, I do not I don't want to read that line. I do not want to process that line. Skip, go to the next line. I will go to the next line. If, if not, this condition does not hold good, print line. That is all. Right? So, you can have a small modification in the code, but still my output remains same. Right? Now, so here also we have something like um, multiple things. Now, example, you go back here, what is that we are doing? Line dot start with. So, in that case, I am telling whether my line is starting with from, consider, do not consider, based on that I take an appropriate action. Similar to this, we also have something called as like this. If not, what did I give there? Start, I use some function, but here you can use a string. So, advantage is what? We can use a string. So, what am I doing here? Now, I am looking or I, I want to process a line in the file, I want to process a line in the file where my line contains this string, this substring, right? At uct.ac.za, if it is there, I want to process it. So, for which I will check, if not, then I do not want to process that line, continue. So, it will go back, skip, go to the for loop. If it is available, then I want to print that line. So, not necessarily that you should use a function, you can also use a substring, check for a substring for that existence in that particular line, if yes, process. So, this part, whether it is file or not a file, still it will work, right. So, processing logic remains same. But small change, if it is a file, we will have, we will use a file handler. If it is an array, yeah, instead of file handler, put an array, our code will remain same, right. So, data what we try to read depends on whether it is a file handler or an array. So, in this, if there are hundreds of lines, if there are hundreds of lines, uh, for example, if this is our case, right, then in the case, this, what are we checking? Read one line, we have read the first line. Then we look at whether that line has this content whether that line has this substring, if yes, print that or else skip. So, we are trying to check with this. Now, if the first line is valid, second line is invalid, third line is invalid, fourth line is valid, whether it will be my second line while printing? Definitely yes, because we have used R strip. If I skip R strip, what will happen? First line is appropriate, good. My next line according to me valid, it should print on line 2, but it will print on line 3. Why? Because of slash n. But how did we overcome that problem of printing that on line 3? We used R strip. So, we are trying to re remove that slash n which we embedded in the, which actually comes with the file and print adding slash n, we have not done any modification. So, hence we are able to get that on the second line. So, it is not necessary that we should use a function to process, it can also be a string. Now, many a times we come across like what? writing a code. Now, recall in all our open functions, what was the code open mbox.txt and so on. But what if I want to change the name of the file? Yeah, simple answer, no. go back to the code, change that name file, but that is not the best method. So, I will tell the user, look, you give me the name of the file. What are the file name that you give? I will try to open that in the specific mode that you request, that is all. So, how do we manage that? For which we have a function. So, what is the concept? The concept is nothing but I try to ask for the file name. I try to ask for the file name. So, what is my function? 
in our earlier discussion also we had discussed about this function right which is nothing but raw input we will use a function called raw input I will tell enter the file name enter the file name so now this is displayed for the user this is displayed for the user and what are the user types like mbox.txt or some file name.txt or studentinfo.txt what is the file name that is given that actually is our f name so in our case in our earlier example f name was mybox.txt which will never change but if i use raw input i am telling user that you enter the file name whatever you enter i copy that to a variable called f name so once i have the file name what you want in the variable f name i'll tell open so open f name open f name so i get a handler f hand then this whole thing is my logic so whatever i want for this particular file what logic i want i can write here whether i want to do a writing on a data whether i want to update that whether i want to uh, maybe delete the content of it all that i can do here so or maybe something like this for a particular line i want to process rest of the lines i want to skip we can do that i want to count how many lines are there i want to count how many words are occurring in that particular file how many instances of that word is there in that file all this is our logic right so this logic keeps changing so i need not worry about this logic based on my problem statement i'll change my logic here so what is this logic talking about simple i have some file in that file there are lot of lines i look for what is there a line with subject is there a line line with a word subject if yes i want to count that so now after i have display i run this program what is my objective of this program objective of the program is simple in a given file how many lines are there with subject line how many lines are there with word subject so for example we have given the input as mbox txt and there we are able to identify that there are 1797 lines with subject word with a subject word and so uh, another file and where we have something called as a 27 subject word so my logic may change but the methodology will remain same open a file you get a file handler use the file handler perform the necessary action and finally close the file handler now how to close use a close function with a file handler f name right? now here there are a lot of issues here right so if you have a file then file may exist file may doesn't exist based on the mode we understood that we'll take an appropriate action now when something goes wrong as a programmer you want to handle or you want to tell the system you handle that right as we become familiarized with programming our concept will be what not to tell somebody to take an action we will take an action based on the response that we get wherein it is the programmer choice so we'll talk about how to take care of this programmer choice in the next session